So back in the year 1975, when we were all cavemen, no one had ever lied up to that point. But then it happened. The cave wife, Angela Gruntsworth, came home and she was feeling a little flubbery in the this region over here. And so she asked her husband, do I look fat? The husband, knowing that he enjoyed sticking his his friendship meter into her love barrel. He lied. She did look fat a little bit. It was the first lie ever told, but it was to serve a good purpose. He, hey, you look fine, honey. No, no reason to rock the boat here. Let's just be happy. It's a hard life we live here. I have to kill a rhinoceros every seven days for us. It's hard. They're heavy. So from that moment on, humans started lying to each other more and more. And then the low carb movement came out and wow, aren't we lying about stuff? So in today's video, I want to tackle one of these lies, the insulin myth. And we'll talk about why low carbers, they don't even know what insulin smells like, let alone what it does in the body. So let's get to it. So I enjoy learning about health from everybody. I just, I like hearing people's opinions on it and I love having my mind blown. Just like when I heard, first heard Dr. Amon Ra and he was like, I just eat one meal a day. I eat no fruits and vegetables. I was like, what? Uh, like my whole thing up to that point was raw food was the truth. Like that's the best way for everybody. And then we work around that, which way how to do it, high carb, low fat, whatever. But he was just like, no, the fasting is the key. Fruits and vegetables are nothing. I eat rice and beans mostly. So I like having my mind blown and I like hearing people's opinions that are opposite to mine. It just, it's interesting to me. And if they're getting good results, I wanna know why and what can we learn from each other? What can we find as the common denominator as to why you're successful and also he's successful? Why are the two groups doing opposite shit and they're both getting results, what's going on? So I've been pretty fascinated about high carb diets versus high fat diets. You've probably noticed it's a theme. I talk about it a lot on the channel and it's because it just, they seem to get the same results in a different way. The reason high carbers are successful, in my opinion, they keep their fat just low enough to where their cells are very insulin sensitive. So when they do eat sugar, it spikes up, but it goes into their cells easily. There's not a huge, prolonged period where your blood sugars are like diabetic levels. So high carb seems to be the key when you lower the fat. The high fatties, hey fatty, they seem to have success by lowering the carbs. You eat high fat, take the carbs out, your body burns the fat, and then you don't have the saturated fat swimming through all your veins and organs and clogging up your arteries. You burn the fat as fuel, but you can only do that if you lower the carbs. So it's like this magic. And that's why people keep telling me, oh, we just eat a balanced diet. I will balance on this real thing. A balanced diet is the dumbest approach of all of them. Pretty much everyone I've ever heard that I respect says you separate them. You either do high carb, low fat, or high fat, low carb. You don't go treading in the middle. If you're in the middle line, right here, you can die. Too much fat in the blood is going to prevent the sugar from getting into the cells, prolonging high blood sugars, aging you, stabbing you. Too much sugar in your high fat diet, your body will burn the sugar first and then store the fat and make you lumpy. You want to be a lumpy ass lump man? Some people can get away with anything. They just eat food in any combination. Doesn't bother them at all. They could eat rice and beans with coconut fish and Texas cheese sauce bread but for those of us trying to get healthy here we need to dial things in a bit and ease up the digestive stress and so you pick a side high carb or high fat i will stick to that now here's where the lie comes in this was the whole point of the video we got there well it's only like eight minutes in we get there so there's been a lot of studies on longevity and a lot of people look to the blue zone people and they're trying to find 
common <laughs> blue zone people. They, they live long in many different areas of the world and they try to find commonalities. And it seems to be low insulin levels seem to be a key major factor in aging. Keep your insulin low, you age slower. Now here's where the low carb dieters play on your stupidity, hope for your ignorance, and lie to sell books and other stuff. Barbie dolls. So insulin's major role in the body is to take sugar and use its key to open the cell and push it through like it was drunk. It's like, go home, Sarah, you're drunk. Sleep it off, Sarah. That's insulin's major role. Take your drunk friend home, push it in the cell, make sure it got there safe. Now here's where the low carb dieters lie to you and prey on your stupidity. They say, you want your insulin low, therefore your sugar should be low. You shouldn't intake much sugar. You have to keep the insulin low. Sugar spikes the insulin, you keep that low. That's how you lower insulin. That's a lie. It's actually a half truth. And there's two ways, two separate paths to lowering insulin. The first way is to lower your sugar. That's what they want you to think. And it does work. Like you eat a high fat diet, not high animal protein diet, because that also spikes insulin. So high fat vegan plant-based diet. So you're not intaking much sugar. So you don't spike that insulin much. You have low insulin levels throughout the day, preferably one meal a day. The second way, which also works and is possibly even more effective, is the high carb diet, pretty low in fat, one meal a day. Your insulin is so, shut up. Your cells are so sensitive to insulin that the first look at sugar, they're just like, yep, Come in here, we're ready. Just get on in here. We're having seven orgies and you're invited. You increase your cell's insulin sensitivity. Oh my God. So you get the sugar out, even though you're ingesting a lot, you get it out of the bloodstream fast. And the way to do that is one exercise before you eat, eat one meal a day. So it's only one spike and eat the amino acids. <laughs> eat enough protein before your meal because they act as anti-glycating. They sacrifice themselves. If sugar is gonna glycate your body, you eat a bunch of protein beforehand. And instead of glycating your proteins, they glycate the amino acids. So that's just one role of the amino acids. The amino acids also lower your blood sugar. So if you're doing something like the almond raw diet, yes, you're eating a high carb meal. Yes, you are spiking insulin but it's such a quick spike and it's such a drastic lowering quickly after. It's like sugar in and out of your blood, boom, done in like 15 minutes. So it's like, which is the better way? Lowering sugar all day or priming your body to receive the sugar? There's two ways and they both work. Why can't we get along together and just share our information? Why do we have to lie that is the worst part about any diet guru. They lie to you about the opposite path because it conflicts with their path. Just say it. I know it's not gonna sell as many books to say you could also do high carb way. And that, that, it works, it does. Just sell me on the benefits of your diet. Tell me all the benefits, why it works, but don't lie because you ruin the message. When you lie, it's like, well, how can I trust you now? You're lying, you don't know basic physiology. You don't even understand that you can increase sen insulin sensitivity. <laughs> so I just wanted to share that. And it's important to know that there's more than one way to heal the body. If someone just says, this is the way to heal and anything else you do that's not that doesn't work. It's fruit only until your disease is healed. And if you're doing anything else, you're kidding yourself. You're gonna get cancer of the bum cheek. There's three fighter jets. There's one there, there, and there. Why can't we get along fighter jets? He's on high carb, he's on the high fat. He's doing the balance one and he's turning all weird and shit. Doesn't even know that you're supposed to go that way, you were going that way. Get a grip of your life. So I suggest you try both paths to see which one works for yourself best. 
because I've had so many people tell me that they just feel amazing eating nothing but fruits and vegetables. And it's like very low fat. It's like, I feel so energetic and light and happy. This is the truth. And it's like, I feel like absolute shit on that kind of food. So it's like, it works for you, but not for me. Would it work for me if my body was better? Maybe, but I just feel like some people work better on slower digesting foods. I metabolize it too quick, my sugar spikes. It's like even doing the one meal a day, I tried on the fruits and it just spikes so high and I get so tired after it. Whereas if I do the starches and the higher protein beanie stuff or the higher fat stuff, I don't get that exhaustion spike. So play around with it. And maybe you thrive, maybe you're the freak that thrives on a 50-50. Carbs and fat, zero protein. I just don't believe it's healthy. Too much fat in a high carb diet, you get the blood sugar problems in the end. Even okay raw, raw food is for the longest time. And I always thought you're eating quite a bit of fat because you think it's healthy and it is, but not when you're eating three fruit meals a day. Now his glucose level was 82. The reference range here for this lab is 65 to 99. You want to be kind of middle to low uh, end of the range for glucose, so that's really good. Now, on the other hand, he had another test done later on called hemoglobin A1C. And to make a long story short, that is, your, that is an indicator, shall I say, of your average blood sugar level over the last several months. And John's A1C number was actually a little bit high. So it's like... I don't know. And Dan the man, he eats high fruit and then high fat in the same day, but he fasts so much and cleanses. I think he gets rid of the problems quickly. I don't know, that guy's a paradox of the universe. I know Marcus Rothkranz and Kara, they both kind of mix them together, high fat, high carb, but they do so in small amounts and they eat one meal a day and they're doing enemas out the yin yang. So things aren't loitering in there. So there's ways to get around it, I'm sure, and they take digestive enzymes and probiotics and all this stuff. Just if you're struggling, try to stick to one or the other, in my opinion. I do best on one or the other. I've mapped it out. Like, if I'm on a high carb diet, I need at least two tablespoons of chia seeds or I feel like shit. I need some fat, but when I go over that and start adding in coconut milk, then I start breaking out like crazy. It's like, I have it mapped down. And same if I'm on the high fat, I can eat like 70% fat and then my skin clears up. But if it's lower, if it's 50, I die. So I'm a freak and you might be a freak too. So I think we're done. We're done here. We mountain viewed it today. Thanks for watching the video. Consider thumbing it up if you liked it. Thumbs down if you're eating peanuts and xylitol right now. You sugar alcohol loser. I got monk fruit. It tastes weird. It's like a stevia weird, but a different weird than stevia. It's better. I had some walnuts with monk fruit. It's a no calorie natural fruit sweetener thing. So I think that's it. We're done. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more videos. And I'll see you in the next.